All right, so first and foremost, I'm gonna apologize in advance because there was one bloke that, uh, or one person that commented before in the last video that didn't like that I was having a drink or that there was a glug glug noise as well. All feedback's appreciated, but I live in Australia and I don't know if you've lived in Australia before, but it's bloody hot here. It is uh, well up into 30 something degrees today, which I don't know what that is in freedom units, but I do apologize, this is necessary. Now, moving on to the technology. Way back when, these AVR Dragons were all the rage. I've had mine for over a decade now. Well, it hasn't been used heavily. They have been extremely handy. They're a very versatile bit of hardware uh, for flashing Amtel chips because Amtel use a proprietary mechanism in a lot of the cases or for some of their chips called PDI or it used to be called PDI. The new version, which has been around for a while is called uh, UPDI, which is Unified Program and Debug Interface. So. This isn't too much use to me anymore, not in the traditional sense. And I came across a project the other weekend where I needed a UDPI programmer and I didn't actually have one. So I Googled online, I found this bloke, uh, his handle online is MCU dude. He's from Norway, I'll put a link there. He is amazing. So he has a great uh, micro UPDI programmer which you can buy for 14 bucks I think, plus shipping, probably US pricing. Put a link for that as well because it looks excellent. However, I needed it then and there. I had a project to do. There was, you know, components I had ordered and some soldering to be done and some heat shrink tube to be heat shrunk, and I couldn't wait. So I Googled some other options. Um, now, just to also shout out to MCU Dude. He made a library called Mega Core X, which is awesome. It's a Arduino library for most of the um, AVR Zero series, like the 480X, 320X, 16OX, and 80X, um, which are really common and really good, especially with the 328Ps being in uh, high demand at the moment. So thank you. Uh, we will definitely be using your code at some point. But today the problem was, and I did need his code because I was programming our 4809. Um, I had to find a solution and I've got all these Arduino knockoffs. So to have a quick look, because I don't buy the real ones, they're expensive and I'm cheap or poor or both one of the two. We have here what is very close to a nano knockoff. I've already soldered the headers on. Um, it is almost identical. It's got a 328P on it. You've then got this Juino Tech one. So this comes from a local store in Australia called JCar. Now these are about 29 bucks as opposed to the real ones being 39 bucks from them. I know they're expensive, but again, nearly identical. 29 bucks if you need one on the spot, not bad. But there used to be um, the Nano 2X used a 18 mega 168, not a 328. And I had one of these lying around. So I thought, let's actually do something with it. It's functionally the same as a 328. It just has less flash and, you know, generally less specs. It's got the same amount of GPUs, the same capabilities, everything like that, just slightly underpowered. So I, thought, I might as well put this one to use. Now, on top of that, there is a fantastic, awesome library by this bloke called El Tangus on GitHub. And it's called JTAG to UPDI. Very, very easy to do. The concept is that you flash this with the firmware he's made and then using GPIO 6 on these, it's a different port on some of the other models, uh, and the five volt line, you can use it as a UPDI program. So first of all, we're gonna have to jump into the GitHub repository and download his files. We're gonna have to have the Arduino software running. We are then going to have to flush this and then we have to do a little bit of soldering. So of course I'm also gonna be using my pencil and I've got the short tips in there now as well. I think that's a B, whatever they call it, B4 or something tip I've got on there. So let's jump over to the computer and have a look at what needs to be done. All right, so now that I've fixed the quality problems I had last time, on here we wanna to go to the Arduino website, hit software, and then scroll down until you get to the legacy IDE. The new one 2.0.3 is latest at time of writing. And for me, it is just too slow. This is a more than capable laptop, but it takes a solid minute to open a UI that's about as complex as WordPad. So we'll download 1.8, which I've always been quite happy with and is more than capable. At the same time, we'll go over to the El Tangus GitHub page and we'll download the zip file for his code. Now you can see I did do this just before actually, but my audio wasn't recording, so go me. We want to extract that and stick it in our downloads folder for now, and we will run that Arduino installer. Whilst that's going, we're also going to want the CH340 drivers, which are the UART to or the serial to USB uh, chip that is on these boards. 
I'm downloading it from SparkFun because they're trusted. You know, they're a good mob and they have this wonderful, uh, whichever version they come with has this wonderful Windows 3.1 style driver. So I'm not gonna hit install yet, I'll show you why. You only need to do this if you haven't used one of those chips before. Now, whilst that's installing, it's good to remember, that as far as the physical connection go, these use a, a mini USB connection, not micro USB, which seems quite common for Arduino. So we'll grab our mini USB, plug that in to both ends. Always get the USB connection the correct way, the third time. And now if we have a look in device manager, same as last time when we started to plug something in, oh, well, pff, I've already got the drivers installed. If we go uninstall, delete the drivers as well whilst we're at it. The first time you plug this in, which I'll re-plug now, it's gonna look a bit like that. It's not very happy. So this Windows 3.1 installer, you just hit install. That's it. And then after a tick, it'll refresh and show it, and then it's gonna assign a COM number to it. And we don't need this anymore. So we have a happy COM5 there. We have some TXRX that was just going on, and we have a nearly finished Arduino IDE installer. If you go to this GitHub source code we downloaded, you wanna click on the source directory and rename it to jtag to UB, a UPDI. The reason for that is because we're using Arduino. If you're using these compile scripts or AVR dude, you don't need to do this, but you'll see in here, there is an INO file for us. If we open that up in the IDE. All right, as we expect that launch is nice and fast. So what we're gonna do in here then is make sure that we've got the nano board picked because that's what we have. We're also going to just specify the variation of the board, which is the 168. Pick the COM5 port, which is the one that we want. And we should be right just to flash it as is. There shouldn't be anything else that we need to do. Now here, you might need to change this depending on what you're doing or what model you've got. It should auto detect for the most part though. So let's compile it and see what it does. We can see all the lights were just flashing a million miles an hour and then it was done uploading. If we go serial monitor, we'll see if we get anything on reset. No, and that's kind of what we'd expect. This is code that will just sit there idle, doing what it needs to do when we ask it. Now, we're not quite done either. If we close this down, we can come back over to the physical unit itself and there is a slight bit of change left. Now, I'm gonna grab my Pinesel and solve the first issue with this, which is that we need to prevent it from auto resetting. Now, I should also say as well that there is apparently another way to use um, UPDI with something like this, which is you can short TX and RX with a one kilo ohm resistor and use Pi MCU Prog. I haven't played with that. I want this dedicated device, so I'm gonna do it this way. Now, if we get that heating up, Give it a little clean, got my tweezers. And we actually need to short the ground and reset pins. The reason for that is because it will reset itself every time serial disconnects or connects, which is not ideal. All right, so to do that, we have got these 10 microfarad capacitors that we're gonna use. So I've already got one out here, you can see it's quite tiny. And all I'm gonna do is hold that between the reset and the ground pin directly on the board. Now you do not have to use an SMD capacitor, you can use any. This is just what I've had from another project and it should be pretty straightforward. Hold it in place, touch, don't desolder it. Touch it with a little bit of solder. That should be right. All right, that is a really poor job, but it doesn't need to be good. I'll clean it just slightly, make sure the connection's good. And we have one more tiny modification. All right, that's fine. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is get a three pin DuPont cable. We don't need one of these ends, so we're gonna take that off. Now, first things first, we're gonna to need to grab the two outsides. So in this case, it's gonna be the purple and the gray. And they will be our power. All right, so now that you've got your DuPont cable that you've managed to strip down, we've only done two of them for now, we'll do that third one later, we're gonna to need to grab the five volt and the ground lines. So the five volt line on this one is the one at the back there. We'll grab that, bend it through, and then we'll just put a touch of solder on that. All right, 
and then we can do the ground on the other pin on the other side. I will of course put some photos in afterwards so you can see this a bit closer. All right, so we've successfully hijacked the five volt and the ground from the Nano, but of course you need a data pin. So let's strip a little bit more off. Now what we're gonna do with this data pin is this is gonna go onto D6, which is over near that chip there. Let's see if we can get it right first time. Yes, we did. All right, and there's D6. Let's solder that in place. Now, before everyone has a fit, there is another step. I haven't forgotten. All right, that's D6 soldered in place. However, due to the way that the protocol works, we do need to extend it. So I'm gonna actually cut this line, or not quite extend it, but we need to modify it. I'm gonna stick a bit of shrink wrap tube down this first. We'll get that out of the way. And then let's just expose a bit more of that line. I really should have bought my cable stripper from the workshop, but it's just one of those days. You can use a lighter, you can use your mouth, you can use scissors, it's personal preference. I've used all of them today, to be honest. Now, what we wanna do here is put a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor in line. Now to do this, I'm also just gonna pre-tin it because it makes it a little bit easier. These leads can be pretty dirty sometimes. All right, there's one side done. And then ooh, the other side done, sticky boy. We will pre-tin these wires up here too. And then actually soldering it should be nice and easy. So this side, perfect. Turn it around and if you can get it in a good spot which I'm really struggling to at the moment because you need four bloody hands or an uh, awesome little tool called helping hands, which I left out of the block too. There we go. So we have that 4.7 kilo ohm resistor in line with the data pin, which is D6. We have our, oh, that's not ideal, is it? All right, I'm gonna redo that connection. You don't want to short the wrong pin. So I'm not gonna push it through this time. I'm just gonna solder it straight to the top after I re-tin it. The reason I'm being extra careful here is because you really don't want to short any of the other pins. They may not be doing anything in the code, but it's just good practice. So the ones underneath are just okay. It is very close. The one on top now is perfectly fine. Can unplug that. The last step is using that bit of heat shrink tubing. So we'll make sure all those connections are good. I'm happy with that. Make sure it's cooled down. Slide that over. And we'll just use a lighter. You can use a heat gun, uh, even a hairdryer. And that's just gonna protect that connection a bit. Now with how I've attached these, these will probably snap off at some point. What you could even do is just put a big bit of uh, hot glue on there. You could cut it to length if you want it to be nice and uniform. There's a few options of how you could make this a little bit more resilient, but generally I treat things pretty nicely and I put them all in their own little container so that they're looked after in the drawer. That now though is a a USB to UPDI adapter. I'm gonna use that in another video in the future to flash an 18 mega 4809, which I'm doing some stuff with. So the key things we did here is plug this into the computer, install the drivers, download the JTAG to UPDI zip file, installed Arduino 1.8 IDE. We then installed the drivers, so this appeared as CON5. We then picked this board and specifically this 168 chip in the Arduino IDE after we had renamed our source folder to the project name and opened the INO file, uh, INO file. We then flashed it, confirmed it flashed successfully. We saw that happen and there was no output. So it appears to be happy. We have then hijacked the five volt and ground lines. We have hijacked D6. We've put a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor in line and we've also shorted reset and ground with a 10 microfarad capacitor. That is simply for the voltage levels of the protocol. Uh, that is to stop the auto reset on serial connect functionality. 
And this all up costs us 20 bucks maximum. It's like two cent component, 0.1 cent component, 17 bucks for this board, or you know maybe 10 bucks if you find it on the cheap, or five bucks if you get on AliExpress, probably even less, and cables that you're bound to have heaps of lying about. There's text instructions out there for everyone. It's up to you if you prefer video, this might help you for text, it might help you. But big, big thanks to two people. One, to MCU Dude from Norway, who wrote the libraries we will be using, but who also makes one of these as an all-in-one, and it's amazingly cheap. Again, 17 bucks for the whole thing, uh, 14 bucks for the whole thing. Uh, and a big thanks to the bloke that goes by El Tangus that wrote the program that actually does this. This is infinitely handy. I'm gonna file this one away. I'm gonna use these two for testing and development like I always do, but this is now my dedicated flashing chip. I appreciate any feedback you have. Uh, it's been great getting to know you all in the comments in the last video. I really like how popular that's been. I'm gonna keep working on the OX64. I've also had some other things turn up. Don't forget, I do have a really terrible gaming channel and I've got a cooking channel where I also do some hot sauces and chili stuff and product reviews. But, you know, technology is my lifeblood and I really enjoy doing this stuff. So I hope it helps all of you. I hope you're doing really well, having a great weekend, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers, see ya.